Hello, every pony out of Louisiana here. Link to my Divini Art in the description below, and also for my Patreon if you'd like to do that. Now, today I would like to warn you about this is going to be very long uh, because it's a fanfic reading of uh, something I made myself, and uh, it's called The Fall of the In Crystal Empire, and um, I hope you will like this. Now, uh, you can always skip through the story if you don't find it that interesting or you can go and watch my other videos um, tomorrow I'll promise to make something more less you know long or something I just wanted to do this for today yeah okay here we go 3 2 1 fanfic fall of the crystal empire it all started with the crystal queen that was sad because she couldn't find love so she sends ponies far and wide to find her a suitable king. But even though a lot of stallions came, none of the stallions could pass the queen's test. The queen has set up the jousting match in all of the festivities to hold her people happy. The people was happy, but the queen was sad. Still in the amusement, she looked upon the jousting match, hoping that one pony could stand up to her test. But one day a light grey stallion with a cutie mark of a snowflake made out of crystal on his flank comes up to the queen and tells her that a snowstorm is needed and they all have to go inside. The queen is not in the mood and say to the stallion, I will pack up and go inside when the jousting match is done, she says harshly to the stallion. Her cold eyes looked at him, blank, almost like she was dead inside. The stallion looks frightened and looks out into the crowd and to the long, long line of stallions trying to get to the queen, trying to get her affection. My apologies, your highness, the stallion says, but the snow is going to fall. Look at this long line of ponies. Do you really don't care about them? The queen answers in a sadly voice. Oh, well, if you want it to go faster, you can go and join them yourself. I am sorry, but I need this. The stallion gets angry. But walks away, he starts mumbling to himself. No winter? Well, that can't happen. Then the nature and the animals will suffer. Hmm, I guess I have to do this. The stallion walks to the nearest tent for gearing up for the arena. He slowly puts on the silver armor and finds a lance in the room also. He stands proud with it on, thinking about his old ruler and thinking about the respect he had. He was once in a royal guard. He could defend. He must defend. But defending for fun? He seemed almost weirdly about this. He walks out. He comes to the arena and see in the other end a stallion with a gold armor on. He points his lance at him, starting to run. He had no choice now. The two stallions galloped at each other and run into each other. Blam! The golden stallion fly out of the arena and onto his rump. The grey stallion go and see if he's okay. Not even noticing the cheering crowd and the queen that comes interested. He walks back into the arena, take off his helmet and holding it up, his horn glows and he yells, now it will snow. The sky becomes black and the snowdrops fall, the small star-shaped snowdrops. You're just standing there on the very frozen ground. He looks at the queen and see her blushing, her eyes, her
her eyes was beautiful. The stallion walks forward into the snow and bows to the queen. What is your name? the queen asked. The stallion replies, I am Luz, the maker of snow and cold. The queen replies, I am Crystallias. I am your queen. You are a fine stallion. The festival is over. Send news to my ponies that they can come home to their families. The other ponies clapped or are overjoyed to get this news. And even some days passes. Months passes. Five years passes. The queen and Lus seems to grow more in love every day. They even get a fold together. They call her Cadence. In and in time, a other little filly comes into the world. Now the queen becomes demanding of her name, but so is Lus, and they can't decide on a real name for her. The queen becomes so demanding that she wants other things that Lus can't provide for her, even with his magic. He tries to make her ice sculptures. He tries to make her beautiful gifts with his snow. He even tried to make an amulet with a ruby inside. But not even this is good enough for the queen. Lust take it on himself and wear it with pride. It took him a long time to make that amulet. And it seems that only pain and suffering was inside of the amulet's ruby now. One day Cadence comes in and see her father arguing with the mom about the small stuff. Cadence becomes sad and goes into her room and start up making the love poison. Fearing that she will lose her mom and that if she doesn't do anything she stirs up the potion. In this time the queen becomes even more demanding and Lus becomes even more angry. The amulet is filled with power and pain. But one day Lus remembers a spell book from his old place. He asks the queen if he is allowed to go and collect the spell book for her and for the kingdom. After talking a long time with the queen, and telling Cadence that he's going to be away for some time. Cadence sadly hides the potion, knowing that she can't use it yet. She hides it for a better time. Lus take his departure and are away for days. Lus finds the spell book and reading out the spell loud. He tries it on the first thing he sees, a big tree in the Everfree forest. Knowing that the book works, he walks home, and when he comes home, he walks up to the queen and asks, So my queen, what do you ask for me to do for you? The queen looks at him, well, you see, I always love crystals. The king becomes overjoyed and turns everything into crystal. The pavement, the kingdom, even ponies get a crystal coat. The queen herself gets a crystal look to her and she is overjoyed. But this cannot be forever. The king now have turned everything in the area into crystals and can't find anything more to turn into crystals in the area. He becomes angry and sad because he can't he can't do this anymore. The amulet glows and all of a sudden all the crystals becomes black, black 